Welcome to Design Talk 5. This design talk is about a vault door box that I've designed. Hopefully you aren't too tired of box designs because we have this one and one more after it. So let's look at this new design and discuss what my motivations were, what my approach was, and what my thoughts were as I went along. Eventually we'll look closely at the live model in drawings in SolidWorks. As I mentioned in Design Talk Notch Box, I've been thinking about the hinges and catches for 3D printed boxes. This vault door box was also designed with those things in mind. Check out Notch Box Design Talk if you want an additional look at hinges and catches and a deeper look at 3D printer considerations. Also check out my TurboCAD Tip 33 if you want to see additional insights into 3D printing. So although the hinging on these doors is pretty simple with its pin style application, the swivel bolt action catch is pretty interesting. It's definitely overkill on a small storage box, but I thought it would make for a nice desktop conversation piece. I did consider using rack and pinion for the movement, but decided that if I were to produce this as a manufactured product, a simple easy to produce mechanism would be the way. Although we're 3D printing in this instance and considering injection molding for production, one could consider things like stamped sheet metal for the components like linkages and even the slide bolts. While surfing the internet for inspiration, I happened to cross the image in the middle and decided that I would use this for the general premise. As is often the case, I decided that I'd be using SolidWorks for this project. I love the parametric and constraint features of the program. It's the ideal CAD software program to use when one is developing new products and many edits are expected to be made over the course of development. Pictured here is a photo album tower I designed and built for my wife utilizing SolidWorks. So let's move into SolidWorks now and look at the vault box door in all of its glory. So here's our unit. We can go ahead and look in here at the locking mechanism just a bit before we open up. So you grab the handle and turn it to lock it and this way to unlock it. So let's open that door up and have a look at the mechanism here. And here you can see how that works. You turn the handle as needed and then these go up. These bits here I've designed as snap-in and of course you can see that when you turn the handle these come up to here and that acts as a stop. I didn't place the stop further down, so the mechanism will crash a little bit on itself in here, but I don't think that's the biggest deal for this unit. We'd probably look at that if we were actually going to go ahead and manufacture this. Another thing I was thinking about as I was designing this is this handle doesn't turn very much before you have your movement opened or closed, but if we go back to that picture we saw in the beginning, we see how it's got some slots here, and I think what happens with that is you get a little more turning on the handle before it engages to pull on your slides. So that might be a way to go as well. So let's just close this up. Just like so. Go back to ISO view. And let's go ahead and change views for a moment to explode it, and then we'll do an animated explosion. There's your pins, the doors, screws, linkages, slides, the swivel plate with the pin that holds it to the wheel, and then the door and the wheel, just like so. So we'll just go close that back up and go back to ISO view. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at these parts and how they were built. So first we're going to go ahead and right mouse click and isolate the main box. So that's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and right mouse click and select edit part. So we'll expand this and then we can roll this up to where we started. So basically just started with an extruded rectangle then shelled that unit and then did a cut extrude for one of the hinge locations mirror copied that to the other side created a hole straight through the whole unit for the hinge pins 
and created another inside boss. This was an afterthought to create a stop for the main door and add some thickness to the wall. Next I went ahead and filleted the outside edges of the box like so. Next I created the side holes and I just did that by extruding circles from mid-plane. I mean extrude cut. And I did the same for the top and bottom as well. Again, mid-plane extrusion cut. Very straightforward. As for printing, I printed it in this orientation. It didn't need any supports on the printer. Let's exit this and exit isolate. Now we'll go ahead and right mouse click on this door and select isolate. And we'll right mouse click again and select edit part. And we'll have a look at the build there. So well, let's roll this back up to the top here. Here we started with a rectangle that I extruded with some draft angle. Then I shelled that. Then I created a plate at this location. This is going to help with placement of the hinges. So then I did that. I extruded a rectangle to create that one. I created a hole there for the hinge pin. And then did a full round fillet there. And mirror copied to the opposite side. Next I cut a hole for the handle. Then I cut holes for the slide bolts here and here. Then I created a plane at this location where I was going to start creating the profiles for those clip-in bolt slide units. So I did those here. I did one to start and then I mirror copied it to this side and then I mirror copied it to the opposite side. Next I created another plane at this location that's where I was going to start one of these, going in the appropriate direction. Then I created the first one, mirror copied it, and mirror copied to the opposite side, just like that. For 3D printing, I printed in this orientation, just like so. So it didn't require any supports at all. So we'll exit the edit, exit isolation. So we're going to look at a slide bolt at this time. So let's open this door up and let's select this, right mouse click and select isolate. Let's right mouse click and select edit part. And let's have a quick peek at that build. So I just started by extruding two circles at the right locations. Then I created an extrusion here with just a rectangle profile. Filleted all these ends. And then I added a tapered hole with the hole tool, 0 80. And then I used the thread tool to add threads to this, just like so. So I'm going to exit edit, exit isolate. The other slides are created in the same manner. Looks like I went on to the wheel next, so I'm going to isolate that. And we'll edit that one. So here I just started by revolving a circle, like so. Then I did a boss extrusion in the middle. And then another one this way. It's just a circle again. And then I did a circular pattern. And I did another boss extrusion like there. And another one like this. Next I filleted the handle parts like that. Then I added a plane at a location where I wanted to cut this into a square block. So I added the profile, and I did the cut like so, 
And then I added a hole for the pin to hold it to the swivel plate, just like so. So we'll stop editing this component and exit isolate. Next, we'll look at this rotational plate. So let's isolate that. And let's go ahead and edit that part. Let's expand here and let's roll this up to the top. So here we just started by extruding a profile that looked like that. Next I added an axis down here. You can't see it right now. But there it is when you hover over it. And then I created a cut extrusion. That's the pinhole that goes through. That attaches it to the handle wheel. Then I added a 080 hole here and threaded it. Then did a circular pattern. And I added an extra boss extrusion here, just like so. Fairly simple again. So I'm going to finish editing the part and I'm going to exit isolate. So the linkages, that's these units here, are just simple profiles. It's a slot with holes in the end. The hinge pins that we saw before in the exploded view are just simple circles extruded. Same for that unit that goes in here. And the screws themselves came from McMaster Car. I was surprised to see how expensive they were. They were like $3.50 or $4 a piece. It was unreal. So let's close this back up. Switch to ISO view. Close this. And let's hit rebuild here. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the drawings. Here's the first sheet of my drawing series, and it's an assembly drawing. On my assembly drawings, I like to show an ISO view, an exploded view, and a bill of materials. Down below, you can see the title block, and we've discussed those in numerous other design talks, so I won't talk much about that, if any. We go on to the next sheet, number two. I've got this one as what I call a layout sheet. For layout, I add a bunch of views and add the envelope sizes, just to get an overview of what it looks like. Sheet 3, we start to look at the individual parts. So here's the box. It's very straightforward. It's got some nice section views, lots of dimensions, hole callouts, things like that. Here we start to look at what we're going to use for material. In this case, I was thinking about using polypropylene. We'd probably offer it in a number of colors, which we'll discuss later when we talk about plastic materials and finishes. Here's the door with its section views, some detail views, whatever it takes to get the point across. Here you can see that I sometimes will make a second copy of a particular view so that I can add other dimensions that are related, but without crowding what's there. I think that's fine as long as you label what's happening. Next sheet is the slide bolt. Vertical is what I'm calling it here. So again, just some common views, section views as needed, hole detail. Here's slide bolt horizontal, so that's the shorter one. Same type of details as the others. Next is the hand wheel. Just some typical views, lots of details on dimensions. Next is a rotational plate. Again, dimensioned views, specific details and notes. Here's a note about press fit with the pin. Next is the linkage, horizontal linkage. Very straightforward. Just a couple of views, section view, hole call out, that type of thing. Here's the longer linkage, same deal. Next is the handle swivel pin, just simple, straightforward. Next is the hinge pin, again, very simple. Next is the shoulder screw. As I mentioned, I got this part from McMaster Car, and they have drawings there, so you can capture all the various dimensions as needed. So I had a heck of a time 
putting this model together when it came to these teeny little parts. And I couldn't really get the linkage in and the screws. I didn't have a tap and die to make them work well. And so I ended up in this version just using some paper clip linkage here. I sent all the parts to my son-in-law who's going to try using the linkage. Um, because we don't have the tap and die or the screws, I created a different little version of that screw that's going to be more of a glue-in type unit. And since my hands have very fat fingers and a lot of missing fingers on one hand, I was having difficulty, so I'm hoping that he'll get it done. In the meantime, as I've said, I've used these paper clips for the linkage. It actually worked pretty good, and perhaps that could even be one of the changes made before production if that's what one wanted to do. It just so happens that last night I was looking at some YouTube videos and came across this one here called the most unique lighter in the world. And this fellow was machining all these things. He's got all this tiny little equipment, a tiny little lathe, all these right tools. It's almost like he's a watchmaker in some way. And I thought, gosh, it'd be really nice to know a fellow like this to help with that type of thing. Let's move on to the last sheet. So the last sheet is plastic material and finishes. So if I were to produce this, I thought I'd produce six different colors for the main box. For the slide bolts, the hand wheel, the rotational plate, and other hardware, I thought we'd try to get a kind of a chrome finish or a polished aluminum finish. I'm sure that's achievable nowadays. Here's a little note about making sure that we get some samples before things go ahead in production so we can be sure of what we're getting. So that's the design in a nutshell and the thoughts and motivations behind it. This is not something I'll be developing as a manufactured product, but it certainly could be. I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation, that it'll give you some things to think about while you're designing your own products. If you'd like to see some TurboCAD tips for free, visit Don Check's TurboCAD tips page. If you're interested in delving deeper into TurboCAD learning, be sure to check out the full project tutorials on my Textual Creations shopping page. See you next time.